Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and today we are talking about fanny pack carry, specifically the benefits and contraindications of it, as well as a review of some of the fanny packs that I've gotten to work with. Fanny pack carry has become increasingly popular lately. I don't know about you, but I am seeing it on my For You page just post after post, so I think it's about time we talk about the reality of it. For some, fanny pack carry has become an alternative for them when it's not super convenient to carry and the waistband, and for some, it's become their only mode of carry. For example, when I go to and from the gym, I fanny pack carry. This is because I'm usually going to the gym in my leggings and sometimes a crop top or a cropped hoodie, whatever I'm feeling when it comes to aesthetics that day, and it doesn't make much sense for me to walk in with something like my Filster Enigma, go into the bathroom, take it off, transfer it into another part of a gym bag, and then train out after that. For some, they wear their Enigma the entire workout during a CrossFit, you know, wad, and that works really well for them. But for me, I don't like to be limited when it comes to my range of motion in the gym. And it's just something that I have had to work on in the past few years when it comes to finding a solution for this. And then after my workout, I can simply throw my fanny pack back on on my way out to the car. I kind of have this routine where I take my headphones out, I get my keys and pepper spray in my hand, and I make sure my fanny pack pack is across my chest. More on that specific fanny pack later. There's no question though that there are a few contraindications that are worth talking about when it comes to fanny pack carry. First of all, I do refer to fanny pack carry as off-body carry. This is because the firearm is separate from your person. In other words, you can remove it in a bag, set it down, leave it somewhere maybe unsafe. Whereas if you have it inside the waistband, you're not going to just leave it somewhere unless you leave it in the bathroom or something. One of the contraindications of carrying off body includes someone being able to control your body movement by grabbing onto the straps of your fanny pack or purse and pulling you around using that as almost a lever of control on you. So I don't typically like to carry off body because of this known factor. I have a history of training Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and some weapons-based entanglement, and through all of that time, the thought of someone having a basically leash to hold on to while they're fighting me makes the fight a lot harder. This is of course given that the individual that is attacking you has closed that distance from you. Something I do when I fanny pack carry is if I feel like something is off in my environment, maybe I'm seeing some pre-assault cues, I make sure that my fanny pack is in a position that I can easily draw from. So for example, if it happens to be on my backside, across the chest or hips, either way on my backside, I will slowly start bringing it to my front side so that I have easier access to it. This unfortunately happened not too long ago. Over the holiday, I was on a walk with my sister and a truck pulled across the street in front of us, stopped abruptly, and I could tell this person had been living out of their vehicle. There were pillows, blankets, and fast food wrappers in the car. So it was pretty obvious that the car was being lived in. Uh, the man looked disheveled and we live in a fairly quiet and private neighborhood. So there was no reason for someone to be driving around, especially as far back as we were. Upon his stopping, my sister, because we talked about the scenario, we planned for things like this, got behind me. And I actually saw him coming down the road and starting to move over to our side of the road. So I started moving my fanny pack in front of me. Of course, we started backing up as well. We started changing routes. And luckily, I guess luckily, I'm not really sure how to see this, a man uh, came walking behind us with his dog, had headphones on, and was just kind of nodding to music. And I guess this guy that had, you know, kind of provoked our attention, um, saw this guy and took the time to hit the gas and drive off abruptly. I think he kind of saw like, we're not as secluded as he thought we were. And he, luckily he drove off, but in that time, as he was still in his vehicle and we still had a great amount of distance between us, I was able to pull my fanny pack to the front of my person and have it accessible. This may not always be the case. If someone closes the zero to five foot range with me and reaches out and grabs my fanny pack, it would not be the proper time for me to reach for my firearm, right? That goes into kind of weapons-based entanglement. We won't get into that today, but then it becomes a fight over my bag, right? So whether or not this 
person is trying to gain access to my bag because of valuables in the bag or whether they're just trying to attack me and maintain control of me by grabbing my fanny pack, it now becomes a fight over the bag and therefore a fight over the firearm. This is why training things like weapons-based entanglement is so important. Unless I had gone to a course by the Shipworks Collective owned by Craig Douglas, I would have never trained this kind of extreme close quarters situation that would have made me think about something like this happening. Fights happen in the zero to five foot range. They do. So we just have to make informed decisions when it comes to how we carry a firearm in that situation. Another contraindication of off-body carry is the risk we pose when we are drawing from concealment and reholstering. There is a possibility of flagging ourselves and others, and it requires a lot of attention to the muzzle of your firearm when drawing and reholstering, as well as what is in your environment. For example, here I have a blue gun, so I'm just demonstrating that when I am drawing from concealment, I'm pulling straight up and I'm pushing out. And when I'm reholstering, I'm doing the same thing. My muzzle always stays forward and down in front of me, maintaining this line. However, when I am drawing from the holster or reholstering in a fanny pack, I do have to turn my muzzle to my left, and I do pose a risk of flagging my body parts as well as those of anyone around me. So we have to pay extra close attention when handling a firearm out of a fanny pack or really any off-body carry source. We can maintain this extra safety by training with it. As long as you are training with your firearm, however you decide to carry it, you can prevent or at least just diminish the risk of this, of course, ever happening. There's no question that fanny pack carry is extremely easy because we don't have to fit our holster to our body. We don't have to adjust our concealment garments, our outfits when it comes to carrying. We can just throw on our fanny pack with the firearm already holstered safely and attached to the fanny pack. So there's no question why it's become so popular. I just don't think anyone's really talking about the overall picture of it like we are in this video with the contraindications and the benefits. While I do conceal carry with a fanny pack every now and then, like I said, I use it at the gym. If I can carry appendix, I do choose that method because it is all around safer. Learning a method of concealment inside the waistband takes time. You have to find a good holster that is reliable, safe, and fits well with your body and your needs. Of course, that's after you find the proper firearm. You then have to fit it to your body find your peaks and valleys and learn how to best conceal with it so that you don't have to dress around it so much and then you have to train with it and take time and walk around your house in it and feel it out that takes a lot of time and not everyone is willing to do that so i am not saying in this video that fanny pack carry is a replacement or a substitute for inside the waistband carry. Like I said, there are some situations where it is helpful, but by no means is it the best mode of concealed carry. Now we are going to pivot and discuss some of the fanny packs that I have trained with up to this point, and I will give you my official recommendation for a fanny pack that is available out there right now. And my hope is that if you are looking on Amazon or on on, I don't know, Shein or just any other place that sells potentially low quality bags that you will use this as a guide for a high quality bag out there that has concealed carry in mind so that we are using something that is made of high quality materials and that has been tested for its purpose. For today's review, I actually went to my local range. It's Ozark Sportsman in Tawnytown, Arkansas. I absolutely love that range this morning so that I could train with these three fanny packs in order to give you a comprehensive review and also shoot some B-roll to show you what I'm talking about in today's video. Before before we go into those three specific fanny packs, I'm going to give you a few criteria that I believe you should check when it comes to finding a good concealed carry fanny pack. The first criteria is that the bag has a separate compartment for your firearm and your accessories. For example, if you carry things like chapstick and your wallet and your keys on you, like anyone does when they're going out, those things should never be in contact with your firearm. They should be completely separate so that you aren't accidentally fumbling around in the pocket that your firearm is in for obvious reasons, right? We don't want an accident to occur. And it also prevents others from seeing your firearm is in there. And it's just overall, 
overall much safer. Second is that there should be a hard kydex like material over the trigger guard of your firearm so that say you do accidentally open the wrong pocket, you aren't reaching in and accidentally pulling a trigger. This holster should also be shaped for your firearm. So hopefully it is a holster that you selected by choosing your specific gun model when picking it up. A good example of this is the Velcro backed holster by Crossbreed. We'll talk about this more later. The third and last bit of criteria is that your bag has a large noticeable pull tab attached to your zipper so that you have a touch point when you are having to access your firearm. Moving on to the specific fanny pack. So the first fanny pack I ever concealed with was the SOG Surrept fanny pack. Now, full transparency, I work with SOG, so they sent me their fanny pack. They mostly are known for making knives and I've always carried SOG knives since I was allowed to carry a knife as a little girl. Um, so when they came out with the bag line, I was so excited, especially because they have a separate panel in this bag for concealed carry. This bag is no longer sold on the SOG website, but if you're interested in getting it for yourself, of course, after you watch this full video, then you can retrieve it on Amazon. So starting off, this bag has a separate compartment in the back with a Velcro backing. This allows you to attach a Velcro holster to the back of the pack and assemble your firearm in a way that you can reach in and grab it. So of course it'd be angled kind of like so. There's a spacious front compartment where I can put things like chaps my wallet, anything else in here, and it zips up as well so everything is secured and the zippers also lock which is really nice if you have to leave your firearm somewhere which I've never had to do that, I've never done that, but it is something that's nice, it's there, especially if you wanna use this for anything that's not concealment, maybe you're in a foreign country and you're walking around with this, you're able to lock your bag up. Something else I like about this waist pack is the hip pads and this kind of plush padding on the back. It makes it really comfortable for long-term carry if you are carrying your firearm in this. I have gone on hikes where I've carried this for a long time and it has been very comfortable. This, however, is not the fanny pack of my dreams. I do not carry my firearm in it anymore. I do still use it sometimes for other things. If I'm on a hike and I'm carrying inside the waistband, I will carry some things in this like my first aid and my Garmin, but this for now is not something that I've continued to conceal in. One of the reasons is that it just looks very tactical. Whenever I did go out and about when I was going to the gym and carrying with this, I did feel like it was kind of noticeable. So this was something that I just kind of eventually got to where I wasn't comfortable carrying it in crowded public places like that before hikes, things like that. Of course, it's totally fine. Another thing is that the zipper is incredibly small. It's very hard to locate when having to draw and when you are in a fight for your life, time is of essence. Lastly, this pack is just a little bit too large for me. When it comes to being noticeable, this is something that contributed to that factor. So overall, it isn't the pick for me, but if you're interested in learning more about this, I will link it below. Next, let's talk about the Galco Fast Tracks Pack Waste Pack. Kind of a mouthful, but but this is the concealed carry fanny pack by Galco. I was sent this on Instagram and I wrote Galco and asked if they would be willing to send it to me so that I could look into it. It was really intriguing at first. I definitely thought like, wow, whoever thought of this is a genius. It's a great idea. Um, I need to hold it in my hands and try it myself. And that I did. So here are my notes on this fanny pack. So first of all, I love the aesthetics of this bag. It's leather, it's small, it doesn't scream. I have a gun in it, but the thing that ultimately caused me to not want to utilize it when it comes to concealed carry is the mode of drawing from this. So this is intended to bring your firearm up to you when you pull a tab. So to demonstrate this, I'm taking my blue gun and I'm just going to insert it into the fanny pack. And then what you'll do from here is of course this will be secured to your body. You will pull a tab and the firearm ideally would come up like so. From here, you would pull the firearm out and then drive forward. So a few things I noticed when I was training was that this pull was not very consistent. 
When it came to doing multiple repetitions in a row, of course, I reset the fanny pack like I was supposed to. There's a string you have to pull to reset. I noticed that it did not pull up nice and clean like it was supposed to every time. In fact, a few times it even just got caught on these two zippers coming up to where I didn't even feel comfortable drawing from it at some point. While the material of the holster is hard, it is not fit for my firearm. You can actually use a tool to contour this a little bit to your firearm. However, it is not fit exactly for it. And when it comes to something that is holding my firearm, that is moving with my firearm in it, I would say that this especially is a situation where the holster needs to be exactly fit to your firearm. Overall, this is not a fanny pack that I feel particularly safe concealing in. If you are interested in checking it out yourself, feel free to. However, it's not going to be one that I reach for. I can tell that they had good intentions when they built it, but some of the specifications when it comes to the holster getting caught on the zipper and the holster not being you know, formed to your firearm can have some negative contraindications going forward. Lastly, when it comes to choosing gear that we are going to train with, if you choose something that has a lot of layers, so you have to take a lot of steps to reset it, I feel like you would be more likely to not train with it as much because there are so many layers of traction in order to do those repetitions. For example, with an inside the waistband holster, all you have to do is push your hips forward and safely reholster to reset. With this, you have to stick the firearm back in, of course, watching for your surroundings, making sure not to flag your own body parts. You have to reset the string and then you have to zip it up after that. And of course, that's if you reset the string properly because it it is a little bit of a meticulous part of the whole process. So the last fanny pack we will be discussing today is the Vertex Conceal Carry Fanny Pack in collaboration with Lena Michalik. Full transparency, I do work with Vertex. I went to the Women's 2023 Summit in Utah to their headquarters and I got to meet the whole team and give my feedback on the Lena line. This was an incredible experience and I do appreciate how receptive Vertex was to feedback from someone who does conceal carry consistently, as well as from the other women that were there and specialized in things like hiking, overlanding, and a few other women in conceal carry. Overall, this has absolutely been the fanny pack that I reached for and I will tell you why. So firstly, it has a separate compartment for your firearm. I always have my gun tucked into its crossbreed Velcro back holster in this compartment away from everything else. In the front compartment here, I have my chapstick, my tourniquet, my wallet, and anything else I keep in there for medical or personal, completely separate like I mentioned before. And notice while this zipper is quite small, I don't need to quickly access my chapstick. Vertex came out with the quick pull tab that you can replace your regular zipper for so that when you are accessing your firearm, you can feel along the bottom of the bag and then pull this zipper and expose your firearm. In fact, it's better when you have more things in the front because it weighs down the fanny pack and gives you access to your firearm in the back. They also have a smaller zipper in the back. I like to keep things like cash in here and then they have their logo in this rubber material so that you have some traction across your chest and hips when you are wearing it and that way it's consistent. If you need to reach for your firearm, it is in the same location it has always been when you're training. They also have a small loop here so that you can hook your keys onto the fanny pack and wear everything together in one. This way you can free up your hands in the case that you have to carry anything else or access your firearm. So it's worn across the chest like so, and in the case that you need to access your firearm, you can have a touch point at the bottom of the bag, feel up on the bag, grab the big pull tab, pull to the side of you, reach in for the firearm, and then from here, make sure your support hand is behind you as not to flag yourself, pull up from here, and then push out like so. Overall, this is the fanny pack that I reach for. It checks all of my boxes when it comes to the criteria I mentioned earlier in this video, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. I chose the black color because I mostly wear black. It blends in really well, and it even resembles the Lululemon fanny pack that 
recently went viral. I feel like I see them everywhere. So it helps me fly under the radar when it comes to concealment. The Vertex line in collaboration with Lena Mitchell like, is continuing to expand. So to check out what options they have in addition to the fanny pack, I will link it in the description along with my discount code. As I recommend with every video I post, please do your own research. This is so important. You are your best advocate when it comes to this topic because there are so many nuances. There's so many gray areas. So please do your own research, educate yourself, and make an informed decision. We are all responsible for our own modes of concealed carry and inevitably our journey. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because I plan to take these bags to my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym and put them to the test when it comes to weapons based entanglement so stay tuned for that and if this video helps you you can greatly help my page by liking and commenting what you would like to see going forward along with anything you think I missed in this video or any other topics you would like me to cover in the future thank you so much for watching in the meantime check out any of these videos and I'll see you in the next one